Hi, welcome back to my all-in recovery project. And I am documenting my process from start till whenever of my all-in eating disorder recovery process. So it is about day 17. I've wanted to vlog for a couple days um, because I'm really struggling this week with weight gain. So I'm in my third week, right? This is the time when eating more calories starts to show, you know? I mean, obviously you kind of feel it, at least mentally, the first moment that you start eating with freedom, but it is painful when you have spent possibly decades being afraid of weight gain, uh, feeling fat on your body when you do gain weight, and it's challenging, it's painful, it's torture, okay? But I keep reminding myself that this is exactly why I'm doing this, because I need to love my body in whatever form it comes. I need to tackle fat phobia. It, it really is shedding a light on exactly how fat phobic I am, which it's a prejudice. You know, you can say, now bear with me here because most people don't want to look at it this way, right? If you hate fat on your own body, you hate fat on other people's bodies. It might not affect you as personally, but really fat phobia, is a prejudice like any other prejudice and it's wrong <laughs> it's wrong but it's so supported i mean even fat people believe that you shouldn't be fat and it's automatically assumed to be lazy or unhealthy or negative in any sort of way um i think for me it's especially difficult because i'm single I don't necessarily want to spend the rest of my life alone. I'm okay with it. I'm, you know, I'm fine by myself, but I would like someone to be attracted to me at some point. I would like to, you know, grow old with someone, but you, when you're fat and when you've been fat phobic and you've been dieting your whole life, you don't believe you're attractive overweight. And this is part of what I wanted to tackle here. And then in, intrinsically, the main issue really is sitting in that fear and experiencing the moment so that you can take the power out of it. So it's like exposure therapy. It's really, it's a method I've always believed was the best one to tackle a lot of psychological disorders that are based around fear. Um, whether it's OCD or panic disorder or something like that, you, anything based on fear, you really need to face the fear. Fear of flying, whatever. Fear of being fat, fear of being fatter, fear of weight gain, fear of rejection for being fat. It's all things that I know I will never recover until I tackle that and I have to sit in that fear and um, in this third week it's like I crossed that line like to myself and I I feel like visually from average or high average to overweight and a lot of people would have called me overweight to begin with, right? But, you know, anybody who is fat phobic or into, you know, physicality, I wasn't skinny, I wasn't what I would consider thin. So, you know, it's, I to me, I was already fat, but I crossed that line of what other people are gonna think of me, right? I crossed that line where I can't suck it in. I crossed that line of when I go to the store, it doesn't matter what I wear, I'm going to just be seen as an overweight person. And I have to remind myself that not everyone feels that way. Not everyone gives a shit. Not everyone sees anything but a person when they see a fat person. 
It's just me and it's just the prejudice that I was raised in. And it's just, it's not even that much of an asshole. It's basically judging myself for my whole life. But you do have to admit that it does transfer to other people in your head. And the people that can admit that are really lying. If you've had a problem with your own weight, you've had a problem with everybody else's weight. Or if you are fit and you put a lot of effort into being fit, um, whether it's exercise, uh, dieting, if you put a lot of effort into controlling your body, you really have a hard time with people who don't give a shit about their body. And you, you kind of hide behind that and say, you know, they, they really should not be unhealthy. There's something wrong with choosing to be so unhealthy. There's something wrong that they have no self-control. And I think it's so hard for me to say this. I think I have to be fat to understand all of this. And it's hard because I've been probably 50 pounds heavier than this. And it was panic. So basically I gained the weight when I was pregnant with my first child and I had her and the weight didn't come off. And I was in a literal panic to get it off of me. And it's like the minute I could, this is where my eating disorder went out of control. The minute I could do something to take it off, I did. And I didn't stop until I was underweight. And it just sparked years of eating disorder. And I really cemented a lot of the ways that I controlled my weight in those years. And I, I wish so much I had been there and I had said, I love my body for what it just did. It just birthed the child. Sorry, bug. Um, it just birthed the child. It just carried a child. And, and when I gained it, during the process of gaining it, because I was pregnant, I had no shame. I had nothing. Like, this time is so much hard because I don't have a, quote, excuse to gain, you know? So it's, it's really just changing or challenging all of these mental concepts that I've had my whole life. And during that time where I was so unhappy until that weight came off, I was miserable. I felt disgusting and it was not physical. I remember I, the only difference in how I felt physically inside my body other than thinking I suck is I couldn't cross my legs. Like I could, but like they were kind of perched on top of one another. And it was the only, I didn't feel winded. I didn't feel like I couldn't do things without getting tired. I didn't feel anything. I felt like the same person other than I couldn't cross my legs. It was the only thing that really reminded me that I was fat and yeah, you know, I was busy. I was a new mother, you know, but mentally, I was scum, you know, mentally, I was scum because I was that fat, you know, and I remember dressing and remember the shame of being in public. And I remember embarrassment and almost like I wanted to apologize to people for being fat, you know, so it's, it's very difficult as I see my body growing and I'm just trying to remind myself that I've been depriving my body for a total of 38 years but especially in the last 13 and um, I have a lot to make up for and there is zero chance that if I'm not restricting I'm not going to gain weight zero chance so I have to see myself get fatter and be okay with it. And I think that a lot of growth is gonna come from that. I mean, I literally almost went on a diet yesterday because I was that upset about it. And this is what I came for. This is what I'm here for. 
And I don't have any guarantee that I won't put on 50 more pounds and never take it off. And that's the scary part, right? But that's because I'm fat phobic. That's because I'm prejudiced against fat people, even though I love everybody, you know, I'm just being real. I'm just being blatantly honest with myself right now. And I'm gonna learn how to love myself this way. I really have faith in that. I don't have so much faith in that my body's gonna, you know, plateau and normalize and I'll lose weight naturally. I don't have any guarantees where that comes from. But I do have faith that I will learn body acceptance in the whole thing. Cause I refuse to hate myself through it. I refuse. So that's what's been on my mind today. And um, it's one day at a time. All right. I will talk to you soon.